My name is Julia M. Spencer. Thanks for having tuned into Real Estate Real Talk with myself. And in my show, we're talking about anything and everything related to real estate investing. You have just tuned into WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. Welcome on this Wednesday. We got a couple more days until, um, what did they call it today? The local insanity starts here in the city of Savannah. I love that term. I actually went to the brighter day here earlier, uh, right before I came here to the studio. And there's a little sign saying, oh, because of local insanity this Saturday and the parade, we're going to be closed. Yeah. That's that's what we have upon us here, local sanity coming up. Anyways, if you're visiting the city, welcome for St. Patrick's Day and welcome to the city of Savannah. We love having you here. And uh, if you are local, hello to you all as well. Uh, may, may the force be with you this weekend. <laughs> Anyways, and um, I just wanted to talk just briefly here for about an hour here on Wednesdays about real estate investing because that's what my show is on. And I am also a, a local real estate investor and a Airbnb host. So we're having lots of fun this weekend. This is probably, I always say that every time I have the show right before St. Patrick's Day, this is the weekend that puts us Airbnb hosts into the, into the black numbers here after a pretty slow January and February, March, middle of March here, St. Patrick's Day puts us back into the into the black numbers here for the year so we enjoy that as well and we of course appreciate all of our guests that are coming to town to help us uh get there anyways let's talk about real estate what are we going to have our show here about today today i wanted to kind of expand on the show that i did last week last week i kind of talked about some of the things that you need to get squared away before you can go to your closing to purchase your first home or any home really. And some of the steps were of course, getting rid of the contingencies and kind of making sure that you check the house over before you sign on the dotted line and a couple of those things. But I wanted to backtrack a little bit. I had a little bit of thought about that. I wanted to backtrack a little bit about the whole mortgage process and um, the finance part about purchasing a home. So I wanted to do the show today about preparing to buy a house in six steps, specifically as it's focused on the financing side. So that's what we're going to be talking about, preparing to buy a house in six steps. And while I get my notes ready, I'm going to play some songs from our Stopover Music Festival that we had here last weekend. I'm going to play those for you and I'll be right back. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. And now I hope we're all awake. I am awaker anyways, more awake anyways, bad English there. Yeah. So let's talk about how to prepare to buy a house in six steps. Let's see what we're going to start with. Um, first off, the most important thing that you need to do before you purchase a home, you got to kind of know your credit, your credit score, your credit report holds information about your past use of credit. That data then gets calculated into a score representing your credit worthiness. Now, what I read earlier today when I did this research for the show today, I actually um, researched that a little bit and I did find out that um, there's a website called um, the F Federal Trade Commission website and it is an independent agency of the United States government as established in 1914 by the Federal Trade Commission Act. And its principal mission is the promotion of consumer protection and the elimination and prevention of anti-competitive business practices such as coercive monopoly. However, also on that website, you'll get some information about how to get a free credit report once a year. And you can get a free credit report once a year from all three credit agencies. Now the website or the actual um, government agency, the Federal Trade Commission, are not the ones that are providing that credit report to you. The three agencies will. Um, I think it's Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. But they do have a link there with information to a um, website where you can go to get your free credit report. And I believe it's freecreditreport.com. It's the only um, website that's actually sanctioned by the Federal Trade Commission to get that report. 
Of course, if you go online and do a Google search and try to get your credit report, you'll get all kinds of hits. And a lot of them are subscription services that after a trial period, you'll have to, you'll be charged, your credit card will be charged to do some sort of credit monitoring. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about just a once a year type thing to get your credit report. And you can do that online very easily. I would very much recommend that if you do decide to do that, the Federal Trade Commission has that information of where to get that credit report. Um, so it's important to get that credit report. And if you have listened to my show in the past, I've actually did a whole entire show just on how credit scores are calculated. FICO scores, what they mean, um, how they're um, accumulated, what the actual score means, and so on and so forth. I also went into the show a little bit of how um, the mortgage companies use other data to find out about your credit worthiness because they have internal scores and numbers that they keep track of as well, especially if you had been a customer with any particular company or bank before and they track that information as well. I believe, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, it's the 34th show um, that I published. This was last year. And um, you can look that up actually on the WRUU.org website. If you go under archives on Wednesdays and go to noon, you'll see my show and there are archive shows there. And I'm not sure exactly the date, but you can also go on YouTube and just type in 34th Real Estate Real Talk Show. And my name, Julia M. Spencer, you'll be able to find that. And it's basically a whole hour show that talks about credit scores and how they're calculated. And it's some really good information. But anyways, that is the first step on how to buy a home and get your finances in order is basically know your credit. And the important thing about that is once you have that information, you need to find out if um, your credit information on your credit report is accurate if the numbers are correct on there, if the credit that you have with various um, people is uh, documented correctly on that report. And you can also verify if there is some information that it doesn't belong. Maybe there's some sort of fraud going on. Somebody may have opened uh, credit in your name and it shows up on your credit report. Those kinds of things you can see on the credit report. So this would be the very first step to get yourself um, financially squared away to apply for a mortgage or get some sort of financing to purchase a home. This is also important if you, of course, want to buy another big purchase, such as a boat or maybe a car or anything like that, that you need financing for. And sometimes it's also important to get that information if you're applying for a job. Certain jobs with security clearances will require to run your credit report as well. So you really need to know what's going on with your credit report and kind of monitor that. As far as credit monitoring agencies, um, I go into a lot of detail in that in the other radio show, the 34th radio show that are published. Um, it's, you know, it's up to you. If you think you're going to have issues with your credit report, if you think somebody might be using your identity, or if you had problems like that in the past, credit monitoring might, might not be a bad thing for you. That might be something that gives you a little bit more peace of mind. Um, but it's not entirely necessary as long as you take the steps um, and monitor your rec reports and your credit score yourself as well. Um, the one thing I do want to mention, though, is that as far as um, protecting your credit score and your credit report, there are ways to actually freeze your credit report with all three agencies. You can go on their individual websites there and request that information on how to freeze your credit report. I've had my credit frozen for probably the last 15, 20 years. It's actually very difficult for anybody to run my credit. I specifically have to ask anybody that runs my credit to when they're going to run it, what dates, uh, which credit agency they're using, and then I can go and go through the the hoops and uh, bells and whistles to basically open the report up for that period of time so this creditor can then see what's in the report. Other than that, it's frozen. Nobody can see it. And that actually prevents also from people seeing it that shouldn't have any eyes on it at all. So that is the first step on how to buy a home in six steps. Let's go to step number two. Manage your debt. Well, 
Your debt to income ratio is actually a key role when buying a home. Try to keep your total debt level at or below 36% of your gross monthly income. Most lenders do not have maximum debt to income ratios per se though, but rather guidelines that offer some flexibility. So in general, lenders want to see monthly housing debt of no more than 28% to 33% of your income and total debt of no more than 38% of your total income. Now, I did um, recently speak to a loan officer about a loan that I was trying to get. And the loan um, to in, actually the debt to income ratio definitely did come up during that discussion. And um, a lot of times you can um, somehow manipulate this. And um, in terms of real estate investing, of course, there's certain deductions that you, of course, have as a real estate investor. If you have a lot of real estate, you, you can deduct your um, depreciation. You can deduct your mortgage interest. You have probably a lot of expenses maintaining rental properties that are coming out of your pocket, even though tenants live there and things like that. And also, of course, your income is increased by rent. That That is if you have like another regular job or something. So um, you kind of have a little bit of a, a leeway there in terms of um, manipulating your debt to income ratio when it comes to filing a tax return. And that's that's kind of a good thing. But also, if you're um, trying to get some sort of financing, of course, you have to have a lower debt to income ratio. And uh, you, you're going to have to basically not deduct some expenses that you otherwise would have, which then, of course, results in you having to pay more taxes. So it's kind of like a trade off. You pay more taxes, which shows you have more income, which shows you have low debt. Uh, and then eventually, when you do get the financing, then, of course, you also have to pay that tax bill. And, and this we're talking about um, self-employed people, real estate investors, of course. If you are employed and have a regular job, this most likely won't apply to you because your income is pretty much set and your expenses are pretty much set as well for the things that you can deduct. But uh, managing a debt is very important. A lot of times loan officers have told me that if you're going to apply for a loan as a real estate investor, and this is kind of what I want to focus the show about is for real estate investors, it might be more useful to you if you have a large amount of cash sitting around to pay off some of your debt to decrease the loan to income to debt to income ratio and instead of saving that money to put down on a down payment and then maybe next year around for the next tax return when you have cash sitting around then you will use that as a down payment for whatever but you know kind of take care of that debt manage that debt be um, very aware of how much debt you have and um, what kind of debt it is. And um, that is basically a key role when buying a home. So you need to most certainly watch out for that. And those were the first two steps on preparing to buy a home. And we have four more coming up and we'll get to those in just a moment. I'm um, going to play some more music from the Stopover Music Festival so we don't make the show all dry and all about real estate. Try to get you not to fall asleep. This next one is by Surfer Blood and it's called Swim. And that was Surfer Blood with the song Swim from our Stopover this past weekend. And on today's show of Real Estate Real Talk, we are talking about how to prepare to buy a home in six steps. And we've already discussed the first two steps. They were knowing your credit and second, managing your debt. And now we're going to talk about the down payment. This is always the one thing that a lot of people that want to purchase a home have a problem with. Um, initially, people walk into wanting to buy a home thinking that they probably will have to drop a large amount of money just to get the loan and typically it's been about 20 percent and that's a large amount so if you're even if you're buying just a home that's only a hundred thousand dollars that's twenty thousand dollars in cash that you have to come up with and there's just not a lot of people around that are first-time home buyers that have that kind of cash in their pocket 
And so um, a lot of people are trying to find ways around that. So um, you do have to worry a little bit about this down payment. So when you do purchase a home, indeed, you will have to come up with some sort of cash. It may not be have to be 20% um, because some programs actually allow qualified buyers to put down as little as 3%. And there's also other initiatives from different loan officers and different banks, different credit unions where you can apply to get some sort of that money up front and um, get some sort of down payment assistance. So that's always a good thing. But kind of keep in mind that you do have to have some sort of amount of cash when you do purchase a home. Now, um, when I purchased some of my first homes that I purchased, actually, I did buy with 0% down. And um, that, unfortunately, is not possible anymore since we had the mortgage crisis back in several years ago. Banks don't do 0% finance, 0% down payment financing anymore. The loans that I did get back in the day were VA loans. VA still has that program that if you're a military member in the past, of course, you can use a VA underwriter to underwrite your loan and you're not required to put down a down payment. A lot of times VA loans also let you finance the closing costs into the loan. So really there's very minimum amount of money that you have to come up with to purchase a home. A lot of times it's just the earnest deposit on making the offer on the home, which could be as little as $500. And so um, there are, those options are still out there for qualified people. And um, also what I've done in the past too is I have um, had real estate, of course, already. So what I would do is I would get 20% uh, or get a refinance on one of my existing properties that already had equity and basically get 20% at least out of those refinancing um, offers and then kind of schedule the refinancing and the new purchase pretty much like in the same week so that I can take the money from the refinance as a down payment on the purchase and then have a second loan that would finance the rest of the home. So basically a 20%, 80% type deal where I would get two loans at the same time, one of them being used as a down payment on the new purchase. So you can do that as well. What else is there available to help people with this down payment thing, this big hurdle of down payment? Well, here in the city of Savannah, and I don't know how many people are actually aware of this, and I would like to bring the director of this program sometime here on the radio show. I'm going to try to do that here in the next couple of weeks or so. But there is actually a City of Savannah Housing and Neighborhood Services Department. And in this department, I actually had a chat with the lady there. I think her name is Iris Bryant. And um, it's been quite some time. So I've made some YouTube videos about this. By the way, I have a lot of information on my YouTube channel for more information if you wanted to check it out. My name is Julia M. Spencer. All you have to do is Google my name and you'll find my YouTube channel has lots of videos. But there is a program here in the city of Savannah called the Dream Maker Program. And basically what it is, is the City of Savannah Housing and Neighborhood Services Department, short HNSD, offers three dream maker programs with different levels of assistance offering affordable loans for down payment assistance closing costs gap financing and other related expenses and um i don't want to i want to summarize it from this little brochure that he is here online there's actually savannah I'm trying to find where it is right now but it's on the savannah.gov savannahgeorgia.gov website and basically what it is, you can apply for this assistance program and you can get money from the city, kind of like a, a loan, a deferred loan to help with your down payment and with your um, closing costs from the city of Savannah, provided that the home that you're buying is in certain neighborhoods, depending on which amount of money that you're applying for. And... Um, also that you're providing certain you can provide certain guidelines in terms of your income and contribute a small amount as well as a down payment from your own side as a down payment so um, I believe in the past the way that was explained to me is once you get their loan assistance basically which is basically 
an additional loan to your actual financing through a bank. So basically you go to a bank and you say, hey, I want to buy this home. It's in this neighborhood that has to be revitalized here in Savannah. I want to go to the bank, get this loan. The bank says, okay, you can have this loan, but you got to put down X amount of money. So then you can go to the city of Savannah, to this um, planning office here, Savannah Housing and Neighborhood Services Department, and ask them to basically close that gap for this down payment. And um, as far as I understood it in, in the past, when I had a, the chat with this um, lady from this department, is that the loan is um, deferred for as long as you're living in that home. So basically, the loan is deferred for 30 years, provided the purchaser resides in the property, so it can't be a rental or anything like that, as their primary residence, and the loan is repayable only upon transfer of title when you sell it, refinance it, or demise. So, and they have different kinds of programs. One program is citywide, another program is for certain neighborhoods, and the third program is for neighborhood revitalization areas. And that third option is basically for construction loans. So there are options here in the city of Savannah for you to get help with this down payment and the um, closing costs that you'll need to come up with to purchase a home if you're a first time home buyer. And I'm gonna bring more information about that on some future shows. I just wanted to highlight that a little bit here. We are at the half point of my show here for Real Estate Real Talk. My name is Julia M. Spencer. You're listening to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. And we're going to play a couple of announcements here at the bottom of the hour. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We are talking today about the six steps to prepare to buy a home and i'll be right back don't go anywhere another one of our stopover bands from last weekend you have just tuned into real estate real talk with julia m spencer and you're listening to wruulp savannah georgia 107.5 fm wruu.org we are savannah soundings community radio with global soul and on today's show of Real Estate Real Talk, we're talking about the six steps that you need to do to get your financing in order to buy a home. And third, actually we're on number four right now, so we got a couple more to go. The fourth step of what you need to do to get yourself ready to get financing for a home is demonstrate a proof of income. Lenders will review your income history and require current W-2s, tax returns, or similar documentation. This shows your ability to repay a loan. Let's talk about that. So if you do have a job and you are employed, obviously you're going to have W-2s that you can submit to the lender to prove that you have income and the amount of income that you have. That information will go in with your information from your credit report in terms of calculating your credit score and your, uh, I'm sorry, your debt to income ratio. And of course, if you're self-employed, you won't have any W-2s. So in that case, they'll most likely will ask for your tax returns. If you have been in business only like a year, that's gonna probably be a problem for most lenders, especially if you're trying to get a residential loan um, because they want to have a little bit of a history of you being in business. So you usually ask for about two to three years. So you're going to have to provide a couple of tax returns back. And uh, your lender, of course, will review that. And um, that will also show your ability to repay a loan and kind of also give them a little bit of a picture how good your business is doing. So for people like myself, I always laugh about this because I am a real estate investor, but my tax returns don't show a whole lot of income because obviously I have a lot of expenses. Having real estate ensures that you have a lot of deductions through um, depreciation expenses. These are non-monetary expenses that you can take on your tax return. So basically the money doesn't go out of your pocket, but it's still a deduction on your tax return. That's such a great thing about real estate. Love that part. Um, but also you have other expenses that are associated with running a vacation rental business. And so I have a lot of deductions. I have a lot of income, a lot of deductions, and everything is put back in the business. 
So um, it doesn't look like I make a lot in terms of um, money that I bring home. So it's very difficult for people like myself to get financing. Um, but again, as I've mentioned in the previous step there, there's ways to adjust that tax return. You don't have to declare everything that you have in terms of expenses, kind of show that you made a little bit more in a year. And of course, then you also be uh, asked to pay here by the IRS. The IRS is going to want their share, of course, on any profits. And um, that might sometimes just have to be the um, the sour lemon that you'll have to bite into to get some financing if you wanted that. So uh, demonstrating a proof of income, very important step to prepare to buy a home. Let's go to number five. Have a rainy day fund. Ooh, lenders want to see that you have savings to handle home ownership's unexpected expenses. And boy, does home ownership mean unexpected expenses. Now, unless you're buying like a condo and a lot of the external things outside are covered by your condo association fees or HOA fees, if you're buying a freestanding single family residence, you most likely will have a lot of extra expenses and lenders want to see that you can actually cover them. So um, these are expenses to fix major systems such as air conditioning, heating systems, um, any kind of plumbing issues or electrical issues. And um, I actually did a video about this not too long ago, but um, what I always found is um, you can kind of put a home purchase into three categories. You can purchase a brand new home, you can purchase a fixer upper on the other spectrum, and everything else kind of falls in the middle. So when you purchase a brand new home and you per or you purchase a fixer upper, that's pretty much where all your unexpected expenses are going to be in terms of home buying. This is my personal opinion. Um, if you buy a home that has been lived in very recently and has been livable, in other words, but um, also a home that pretty much has had has been broken in, I should say. That's probably the best way to say it. So if you're buying a brand new home, it's not really broken in yet. That's where I found a lot of the expenses. Like you have to put in a fence if you have a dog. Um, you may have to purchase appliances. The home may have not come with appliances when you purchased it because it's a brand new construction. A lot of times um, some things aren't even finished in the new home and the home builder may have given you a special discount. Um, I actually purchased my very first home that I purchased actually was a model home for that neighborhood. So they were basically developing the whole neighborhood and they put like two homes at the very entrance of the neighborhood and they were model homes for people to come in and look at to see if that's the kind of home that they want. So the model homes were already decorated and they were painted and they were pretty and everything was perfect. But there was one big flaw. They actually made the double car garage into the office because they had to put their office somewhere for this model home. So the garage was um, not a garage and there was no garage door. There was actually a wall there and some windows and stuff. So um, when I, I did get a special price on this model home, obviously, but I had to put in some money to put the garage back in. Now, some other people probably would have just wanted to keep that extra room. You know, that's everybody's choice, but a lot of extra cash had gone into that first purchase that I didn't expect at the time. This was my first home that I've ever purchased. Um, and then, of course, the fixer uppers, if you buy them on the other spectrum, you'll have all kinds of things. I have, um, as I mentioned on my previous shows, are currently a duplex that I'm trying to figure out what to do with. If I do decide to keep it, uh, the money that has to be invested to make it livable is extensive. You got windows, uh, roof, AC system, heating system, uh, power lines, plumbing, kitchens, kitchens because there's two, bathrooms as well. And that's just a lot of money. So and then b that's before even going to painting or doing anything else for the fancier people. Anyways, so uh, you do have to have money for those unexpected expenses. Now, one thing that I do always recommend to new home buyers, though, is that you you somehow inform yourself about buying a homeowner's warranty plan. There's all kinds of companies out there on the websites. Uh, if you Google that for uh, companies that offer basically these homeowner warranty services. And what it is, is basically you purchase one of their plans and they have a certain amount of um, time that they run 12 months usually. 
and you pay them a monthly fee of anywhere between 30 to $100 a month, basically to have the assurance that if something breaks in your home, they'll come and fix it. They'll, they have a network of contractors. You basically call the company. They'll call the contractors. Contractors will then contact you to set up an appointment. And then for a small deductible fee of anywhere between 50 to $100 as well, for each time that a contractor comes out, they'll fix whatever's broken. It's not a big deal if it's something small, you know, if you have like a switch that's broken or something. But it is a big deal if your air conditioning breaks because that could cost you a lot. And having um, as many rental properties as I have in this town, I can tell you that I've utilized that service very extensively, especially in the summer months when it's very, very hot here and the air conditioning breaks. That could easily cost you. A new compressor could easily cost you several thousand dollars. And if you don't have that money set aside as this um, recommendation here is, then um, home ownership um, warranty company might be your savior in uh, in the desert here like giving you a little water anyways. And um, so that's a good recommendation that I always give to people that maybe not have an, that much money for a rainy day fund. But having a rainy day fund, of course, is always important, nevertheless, because you'll need it for other expenses. And that's especially true if something happens to you or your family that you can still afford to make your mortgage payment. And that's kind of also what the lenders are looking for. And that brings us almost to our last step here. Let's talk about getting pre-approved. What does that mean? So getting pre-approved is a good way to understand what kind of home loan product or program you may qualify for and may help you negotiate price against competing offers. And if you can recall, maybe about 10 minutes or so ago, I talked about this Dream Maker program that's offered through the city of Savannah in order to assist to bridge this gap between down payment and closing costs that you'll need to account for um, when you get financing. Well, the city of Savannah will actually recommend a lender for your primary loan as well, I believe, but don't quote me on that. I'm going to have to get somebody in here in the studio to talk about that. Um, but uh, this pre-approval is kind of like the first step to even getting any kind of assistance from the city. So getting pre-approved will basically will tell you, okay, you can qualify for this loan for a 3% down payment. You want to get all that squared away before you make an offer on a home. And this is why this is important. Once you make an offer on a home and let's say the seller um, approves it and signs off on it and you have a contract, you have a set deadline by which you have to purchase this home or default on the contract, which might mean that you'll lose your deposit, your earnest deposit, which you'll have to submit with making an offer. And as we said in the beginning, an earnest deposit could be anywhere between 500 to a thousand dollars. You don't want to lose that money basically. So you want to make sure that you get yourself pre-approved and pre-approval sometimes actually means providing some information to the lenders, like your income and every, your debt, your credit score. And this, sometimes takes time. Of course, if we have a holiday coming up, the loan offers might not be working. So you're losing very valuable time by not getting pre-approved. And of course, as with everything, time is money. So uh, getting pre-approved is a really good way to figure out what kind of home loan product or program you qualify for before you do any kind of negotiations with a seller. It also helps you to actually negotiate most likely a better deal with the seller. Because if the seller has competing offers, several offers at the same time, for example, and um, yours is the only one that's pre, where the loan is already pre-approved versus the other buyer's loan is not, or they have some sort of promise that they're going to pay some other way, then um, in order for the seller to have assurance that the loan will actually close and the sale will go through, they will most likely select somebody with a pre-approval before they select somebody that has not been pre-approved. So getting pre-approved is a good idea in any case. It'll also give you an idea about how much you can actually afford to get from a loan company or a bank and how much of a home that you can buy. So it helps you shop with shopping as well so you don't go above your limit of what you can get financing for in any case. And that kind of are is my last step here for the six steps preparing to buy a home. 
I'm going to summarize those in just a few moments. And uh, that brings me to the end of the show, but we're going to summarize them. Uh, we're going to play one more song from the stop over here, and I'll be right back. I'm going to summarize and um, don't go anywhere. Stay right on. That's Juice by Camp Howard, one of the bands I saw at the Stopover this last weekend. And um, thanks for having stuck with me here for Real Estate Real Talk. My name is Julia M. Spencer. And I wanted to just briefly uh, summarize the six steps on preparing to buy a home before I go off the air here. Um, first off, know your credit, manage your debt, have cash available for down payment, demonstrate a proof of income, have a rainy day fund and get pre-approved. And that was the topic of our show here today. I uh, wanted to let you know that my shows are all recorded and they can be listened to later on on the WRUU.org website. All you have to do is go to WRUU.org, go to archives. My show is on on Wednesdays at noon. So just go to Wednesday, scroll down to noon and you'll see my face there. <laughs> And uh, you can see past shows there at the bottom. And um, I am still catching up, trying to post all the shows. We're now probably, I think, maybe into show 60 or 70 now. And um, having some really good, having a great time here at the, at the studio here. And also my shows are also um, published on my YouTube channel, Julia M. Spencer. Free to watch there for anybody as well. You can go check it out there too. And they're usually published at both places at the same time. So you're not missing anything looking at one side or the other. And um, yeah, and that is where you can get information about past shows that you may have missed. And on the WRU.org website, you can also check on other shows that you may have missed on, that are on on different time slots. Here at WRU.org, we are... Um, we're a station that's ran all by volunteers, so we love what we do. We have a variety of programs, all kinds of musical genres, so you're going to find something you like for sure. Um, wanted to wish you all a happy St. Patrick's Day coming up here this weekend. Uh, don't go too insane out there. In my own interest, or please be nice to your Airbnb hosts, <laughs> and be nice to the city. Enjoy the city, of course. We love it here. And if you're a guest, you're so welcome. Thank you for coming. And uh, up next, we have Ben Austin, who's going to host Mother Beat, an awesome show with very cool African music. So something totally different that you'll never hear anywhere else any, on any other station. So check it out. And I'm going to be off the air until next Wednesday. I'm going to play you one last song to uh, sign off here. It's another one of the bands that played at the stop over this last weekend and the name of this artist are the Beths and the name of the song is future me hates me hope you have a great Wednesday out there bye everyone for your free guide to real estate investing visit julia